hey beautiful people welcome back to my channel i want to appreciate all my subscribers you guys are wonderful and amazing thank you for the visiting ones i really appreciate you all in this video i'll be going ahead to show us how to make this beautiful asymmetric neck long gown with ruffles by the side you can see how beautiful it is looking if this is what you will be interested in watching kindly sit back and roll with me because i know you will love it To achieve this, I'll be using a four yard of Ankara material to do that. You can see I've gone ahead to cut out my piece. If you want to know the process of cut out, I'll drop the link in the description box. I don't want this um, to, to, um, this video to be unnecessarily long. So we'll be heading over to cut the skirt part of the gown. You can see I've already determined the work piece I'll be working with, which I did by using my largest um side which is my hip hips the hips here i am using is 45 45 divided by 4 is um 11.25 and i added like 6 inches to give um room for all the allowances i'll be using the length i'll be working with because the particular this particular one i'm making now belongs to a client and the client is very tall the length i'll be working with on the skate part of this um gown is 43 so the length of the clothes itself is 45 so i'll be leaving it at that exactly the way it is i won't be cutting out anything because i'll be needing two inches to hem it at the down part of it so everything here is what i'll be using the length is 45 and then the width i am using i am using for this work is 16 so i'll go ahead and identify my hip line from my waistline from the borderline i drew so my hip line from my waistline because this person is tall i'll be using nine inches which i have already done and i have marked so here i am trying to show you the length i am using which i have already told us initially so i'll since i have identified my hip i'll go ahead and use my ruler and connect all the dots i have made so i'll just go ahead and take the circumference of my waist the circumference of my waist is 35 and 35 divided by 4 is 8.75 i'll just round it up to 9 and then add 3 inches for sewing or two I'll, let me just add 3 inches for sewing allowance because i would want it to have space so that if the customer complains of anything i can easily amend it immediately it is better to be on the safe side than being where you'll be on a tight corner that there wouldn't be any space for you to start amending so the waist i am working on here is 45 and 45 divided by 4 is 11.25 i'll go ahead and mark that and also add three inches allowance for that i will then mark it i'll go ahead and use my hip cuff to do the connection you can see what i'm doing you can use freehand if you so wish but most times um free hands doesn't come out the way the hip curve comes out the french curve is always the best for the hip marking so i'll just flip over my my french curve and then mark it the way you see me do then i'll just take it all the way down straight line down after i am done making sure that the waistline is visible i will just connect it straight down to the hemline the way you see me do remember that this material is on a fold of two it's on the fold of two just bear that in mind so i'll just mark it all the way down skirt is one thing especially pencil skirt a straight line skirt is the simplest thing you can ever cut it is very very easy just identify your waist identify your hip make sure everything is correct do a straight line down and you are good to go i'll go ahead and cut out this measurement because i am done with the front part as you can see already then i will head over to draft the back part on the back part the only difference there is that the back will be putting our zipper there so i will just carry the front part which i have already cut out and lay it on the back uh, material the back work piece that i will be using and make sure i place it five, uh, one inch away to make to make room for the zip allowance you can see the way i have done it i use my safety pin to pin it down so that it wouldn't shift 
So what will I do next? I'll just go ahead and trace it out and cut it out the way I've cut out the front piece. Just watch me do that. Okay, after I'm done cutting out the back part, I'll just on the zip allowance area, I will go in on the hip area, I will go in by half inch. This is to make sure that my zip is not bulging. But most times when um, you see people wearing um, dress, the back side, the zip is bulgy. But this is to eliminate any bulginess. So I will just go in by half an inch and connect it down to my waist the way you see me do. And then I will cut out that part so that when I am done fixing my zip, everything will lap at the back. I hope you are enjoying this tutorial. I hope you'll love it. Kindly hit the like button if you are, if you like this and let's go. All right, this is the upper part and the front part. You can see it is a bustier. I have a video where I thought I made a teaching how to pad a bustier. I'll be dropping the link on the description um, area below so you can go ahead and watch it. So I'll just go ahead and join the lining the way you see me demonstrate in the video by half inch. Then I will use it and turn the the front part, the material. Then I will bring it and show you. I'll be joining all the material to the material, the back material. Then the lining. I'll be joining joining it separately. And after I'm done joining that, I will join the material separately. I will join the lining separately and use the lining to turn it. Then here we go. I'm already done joining the material to the materials. And I will show you how I'm going to be using the lining to turn the material this is the way i'm going to be placing it i'll use my safety pin and hold it down on that area of the neckline then once i'm done with that i'm going to head over to my machine and join it by half an inch i'm going to be using half an inch and join it once i am done joining it that way on the neckline i will top stitch once i top stitch and mind you, whenever you are sewing, you ought to be ironing because ironing makes your work neat and very beautiful and very smooth. So once I am done top stitching, I will now go ahead and join it by the two sides, then use the and turn it over. You will see it when I am done with that. Just half inch by the two sides, and then I will turn it over. The same thing I will do to the back block as well i'm going to join it on the neck then top stitch it on the neck use join it by the two sides half an inch each anything i'm joining is half an inch so i'm going to be joining it by the side when i am done top stitching with half an inch this is what i'll be doing and once i am done with joining it on my machine i will head back here and show us just sit back and keep enjoying yourself because i know this is a lovely video if you're enjoying yourself kindly hit the like button as we move on on this video yeah i am done joining and turning it i have even ironed it as well you can see how flat it is and how good it is already looking that's the way i'm going to join it when i am ready to join that so i am done with the top part so we're going to head over to the down part of the dress i will show you how I will be using the lining to turn the down part of the dress. Just sit back as we roll. For the skirt, when cutting the lining of your skirt, you're not going to make it the same measurement with the skirt. Like my measurement here is 45, including the hemming. I'm going to make my lining 43. Why? Because it will be used to turn the skirt. When joining the, the lining to the skirt, you have to start from the down part because it has to pull up the lining up. It has to pull the material up to hem it very well. I'm done joining it. I'm going to show you what it looks like at the down part. All right, here we go. You can see what it looks like at the down part. I After joining it, I have to pull. The lining was used to pull up the, the material. Then I stitched the two sides. After I am done joining the down part by half an inch, I had to stitch the two sides by half an inch. And you can see it here. I just joined the two sides by half an inch with the lining. That is all. And the top, I did not touch the top part, the waist part. So I'll be going ahead to attach my front part, the front part of the, the front top part of the dress. I'm going to go ahead and join it by half an inch to the front part. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the back. 
I'm going to be joining it one piece to the, you know, it's two piece at the back. We have not yet joined the back, the back together. So I'm going to be joining it one piece at a time. So the back part here is how I'm going to join it. And I'm going to use one inch to hold it by the waist side. The same thing I'm going to do with the other one. Let me, I'm way sorry, I'm going to cut out this excess lining that is showing here before I'll go ahead and join the upper part of this um, part of the dress by half an inch. So once I'm done joining it the way I show you on this video, I'm going to be bringing it back for us to see. Okay, here we go. I am done joining it, joining the top part to the down part. I've even gone ahead to join the one shoulder of the this thing and I also gone ahead to even fix the zipper as well. You can see that our cloth is almost ready and what I'll be doing next is that I'll be joining the both sides by one inch and I will stop at the waistline. That's where I'm going to stop. I'm going to join it one inch from the armhole then to the waistline. I will stop at that part so that we'll move ahead and then join our ruffle to the dress i'm not going to be joining it right now all right here we go i am done joining the both sides so i'll be going ahead to attach my ruffle you can see i've already made a marking where i'll be joining the skirt that is the line i will follow to join the skirt i start once i start joining the skirt i'll follow that line through and that is where i'll be attaching the ruffle the ruffle i'm using the width as in the width the wideness is four inches if my material is longer or bigger than this i would have done it like five inch and i would have used the material to turn it but because the material is not enough so i will advise you if you're on a tall side you're going to use five yards so that you get the desired quality you have but if you are if you're not that tall you can go ahead and use um, four yards four yards will be good for you so i'm going to go ahead and pleat it the way i am doing i would have done this process on my machine but it's going to make the video unnecessarily long that's why i am doing it like this so once i'm done joining it like this i'll take it to my machine and i would have loved this my ruffles to be on as in, I would have loved to use the material to turn it, but because the material is not abundant, it's not enough. That's why I'm doing it like this. So if you have enough material, kindly use the material to turn it. I'd already gone ahead to hem the end, the end part of the ruffles, and that is why it is looking so neat like that. So once I am done doing this, I'm going to do it on both sides. So once I am done doing it, I will head over to my machine and then join it with the back so the length of the ruffle i use it i forgot to mention that is two times the length of my skirt the length of this kit is 45 and 45 into two that's 90 something that's what i have there so you can see how beautiful it is looking i am done joining it i've joined the ruffle by the two sides and i've used the i have also attached the back to the material you can see how beautiful it is looking very lovely please if there's any place you are confused just feel free to drop your message or your question in the comment section i will be answering it to the best of my knowledge whenever i come across your question and see the way i went ahead to cut out the um, armhole of the asymmetric arm what i did was to place the material on a foot of two by the edge i just placed it on the table and used the as in the material itself the cloth itself and put on top of the material i'll be using for the sleeve and then i cut it just like i twist it out from the armhole itself okay the height of um, my material for the sleeve is um, 16 inches after hemming because I've already hemmed it by two inches so I have 16 inches long left so on the wideness that's the width my armhole the armhole I'm working the arm circumference I'm that's the round sleeve I'm working on is 13 inches so what I did was that I measured 26 inches plus extra two inches to join it so that is what I have on the material I'll be heading over to use my safety pin to attach the elastic to the casing which i have already prepared i've done a casing for the upper part and for the down part 
of the sleeve so the one i'll be using for the down part of the sleeve the elastic is 10 inch for the upper part of the sleeve the elastic is 9 inch so i will go ahead and use my safety piece pin and pass it through the casing i had already prepared on the sleeve just watch me as i do that As I'm joining the um, elastic, you find out that I use my safety pin to safeguard the end of the elastic so that it wouldn't fall inside. Just make sure you do that because once it falls inside, you have to start all over again. Just use your safety pin to safeguard it or better still, you can head over to your machine and use the machine to tack it down so that it wouldn't fall inside. Alright, I am done um, fixing the, the elastic to the sleeve so what i'll be doing next is to use my pin to hold it down on the armhole area the way i'll be joining it i'd already gone ahead to even join it by the two sides so i'll make sure that the joining of the sleeve and the joining of the dress aligns on the armhole area then i'll use my safety pin to hold it down by half an inch i'm going to hold it down the, that way so that you see what i'll be going ahead to do in my machine where i'll be joining in my machine that's the only place i will join in my machine then the other sleeve the other sleeve remember it has a shoulder so it is not an issue you just cut it normally the way we cut our normal um sleeve that's the way i did it the way i cut basic sleeve that's the way i cut it but this time around i had to do it double the size Remember I told you that my arm, the round sleeve is 13, so I made it 26 inches plus 2 inches um, joining allowance, making it 28. So I'll be attaching a, an elastic by the end of the sleeve as well. Then the upper part, I'm going to be pleating it on the machine once I head over to my machine. So I will just go ahead and join them on my machine. You can see how big it is. So when, once I am done joining, I'm going to bring it back so that we'll see the outcome of what we have done. Wow, teaching is not easy. Kudos to us all, both the people that are watching and the person that is teaching. Congratulations to us all. Look at the outcome of what we have been doing ever since. Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it lovely? I know you will love to try this on. Please do try it. But you, as a beginner, you can try it on a pattern paper before drafting it directly on a fabric because you might make a lot of mistakes. Kindly give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you have not subscribed, please subscribe to our channel and put on your notification bell to always get notified whenever we, I post a new video. Invite your friends and family to join us on this channel. And remember, if you have any question or confused anywhere, kindly drop your question in the comment section. I'll be heading over to answer all our questions to the best of my knowledge. I love you all. I love you all, my subscribers. You are all wonderful and all great. Remember to put on your notification bell. Bye.